Hello friends, this video on NEET genetics is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Epistasis is a Greek word which means to stop. Now, epistasis is a phenomenon where we see that one gene kind of stops the phenotypic expression of another gene. So it is the phenomenon in which a gene suppresses the phenotypic expression of a non-allelic gene. That means you have uh, two different genes which are like non-allelic genes. That means alleles located on different genes. Okay. So when you have two such non-allelic genes and you see that one of them is trying to suppress or trying to hide the phenotypic expression of the other that is what that phenomenon is what we call epistasis now let's take an example now there is this uh, uh, summer squash a fruit for which there are three possible fruit colors so if you we will discuss about it in more detail in the next slide so there are three possible colors what are those three colors? Yellow, green and white. Now out of these three colors, it has been seen that yellow and green, these are allelic genes. That means these two are alleles of the same gene. Whereas when you look at white, white is not an allele of the same gene. So white is, a diff is an allele of a different gene. So if you compare yellow and white, so white is a non-allelic gene, yellow and green, they are alleles of the same gene. Now out of yellow and green, it has been observed that yellow is dominant over green. So if if you like by now you all know which what do we mean by a dominant allele and what do we mean by a recessive allele. So out of yellow and green, it has been seen that yellow is the dominant allele and green is the recessive allele. Perfect. But then what is the role of white? Now it has been seen that whenever white is present, it suppresses the phenotypic expression of yellow and green all of them so if white is present then the color of the if the white allele is present in that case the fruit color would be white doesn't matter even if it has dominant yellows so white kind of stops the phenotypic expression of both yellow as well as green now we will learn about it in more detail we will discuss the entire genetics of the fruit color of summer squash so that time it will become more clear so the concept basically is like till now we had been learning in mendelian inheritance we have been learning about a dominant allele and a recessive allele where both the dominant and the recessive alleles they are alleles of the same gene so here we are talking about another non-allelic gene which comes and kind of suppresses or hides the expression of these dominant recessive alleles Right? So, so that's epistasis. So the gene which suppresses the expression, that gene is called epistatic gene. And the gene whose expression get, is getting suppressed is called hypostatic gene. So in this case, which is the epistatic gene? Of course, white, because white is suppressing the expressions of yellow and green. So yellow and greens, they are the hypostatic genes because their expressions are getting suppressed. So this is the phenomenon of epistasis. Now under epistasis, we are going to talk about two types of epistasis that is dominant epistasis and recessive epistasis. So without wasting any further time, let us talk about dominant epistasis. So in dominant epistasis, a dominant gene suppresses the expression of a non-allelic gene. So basically, just now we were talking about the epistatic gene, right? So here, the dominant allele of the epistatic gene has to be present for the epistatic gene to perform its action. Its action is just to hide the phenotypic expression of the other genes. So the example of dominant epistasis is the fruit color in squash. Now in squash, there are three possible fruit colors. And what are those three possible colors? As I was discussing some time back, the three possible fruit colors are yellow, green and white. Now when you look at these, you compare yellow and green. Yellow is dominant over green. So let us represent yellow by a capital Y and green by a small Y. So that, that's the protocol that we follow, right? And what about white? White is the epistatic gene. So it is basically epistatic over green and yellow. 
So, but since it is an example of dominant epistasis, that means that white will show its epistatic effect only when it is present in the dominant condition. That means if you have something like capital W, small w or if you have something like capital W, capital W. So these are the dominant condition of white because white again will have two alleles, right? Capital W and small w. Right? So white is an epistatic gene. So it is a non-allelic gene. Now, okay, one more thing, understand here, green and yellow, these are alleles on the same gene. So capital Y, allele represents yellow. Yellow, small y represents green. So capital Y, small y. So yellow and green are alleles of the same gene. Therefore, we are representing it by the same letter y. But white is a non-allelic gene. So it is basically a gene, uh, it, it is basically on some other gene, on some other locus. So therefore you need some different letter to represent white. Now white will again have a dominant allele and a recessive allele. So the dominant allele of white would be capital W, recessive allele of white will be small w. Now since this is an example of dominant epistasis, so what happens here, whenever white is present in the dominant condition, that means capital W, small w or capital W, capital W. So both of these are dominant condition. This one is homozygous dominant condition and this is heterozygous dominant condition. So when it is present in these conditions, then white shows its epistatic effect. That is, it, it uh, stops the phenotypic expression of yellow and green. So therefore, white is a dominant epistatic gene. So you understand why is it a dominant epistasis? Basically because of this. Now, what if white is present in homozygous recessive condition? That means small w, small w. What if it is present in this condition? So if it is present in this condition, then it will not show its epistatic effect. Right? Let's, so let us look some, at some examples. So let us say if you have something like small w small w capital y small y so in this case if if this is the genotype then what would be the phenotype so if this is the genotype then your white is present in homozygous recessive condition so white is present in homozygous recessive condition so white is a dominant epistatic gene. So in this case, since it is present in recessive condition, it will not show its effect. Now let us look at the other two alleles, capital Y, small y. So we know capital Y is dominant, right? So that means in this case, the fruit color would be yellow. Let us take one more example. So let's say you have small y, small y, capital Y, capital Y. In this case, what would be the phenotype. So here again you have W in homozygous recessive condition so it will not show its epistatic effect. So capital Y capital Y which is definitely going to be a yellow. What if you have small w small w small y small y. So in this case again white in homozygous condition it will not show its effect. Small y small y that is green. So in this case the fruit color would be green. But if you have something like this capital W, small w, capital Y, capital Y. So what would be the scenario here? So see, whenever W is present in its dominant condition, so here you see capital W is present, that is the dominant allele is present for white. So white will show its epistatic effect. So even though yellow is dominant over green, but still here white will show its epistatic effect and it will hide or it will stop the phenotype of yellow. So therefore this time the fruit color would be white. So whenever you have capital W, small w or capital W, capital W, the phenotype is going to be white. But rest of the times, the phenotype will be determined by what you have uh, for yellow and green. So if you have a homozygous, uh, homozygous recessive condition for green, then it would be green, otherwise it would be yellow. So I hope the, with these examples, you've got an idea that how the uh, epistatic gene or how the dominant epistatic gene works. So now let us look at the exact inheritance of fruit color in squash. So let us start with the parents generation. 
So let's say in the parents generation you have capital W, capital W, capital Y, capital Y and you cross it with small w, small w, small y, small y. So what is the color of this fruit? So this would be white because you have the dominant w's, capital w's and in this case it would be green. Because you have one W, so white will not show its epistatic effect, and in the Y's also you have both small eyes, small Y's. So this would be green color. So what would be the F1 generation? So F1 generation would be capital W, small W, capital Y, small Y. So what would be the fruit color in this case? This would also be a hybrid white because this is heterozygous white basically. So this is F1 generation. Now what about F2 generation? So for F2 generation, we will self bred this, self cross this. So capital W, small w, capital Y, small y, cross with capital W, small w, capital Y, small y. And then you get the F2 generation. So in order to get the F2 generation, so what are the possible gametes that will come out of these? So four possible gametes from each of these, that is capital W, capital Y, capital W small y, small w capital Y and small w small y. So similarly this side the gametes would be capital W capital Y, capital W small y, small w capital Y, small w small y. So what would be the genotypes? It would be capital W capital Y, capital W capital Y, here capital W capital Y, capital W small y, capital W capital Y small W capital Y capital W capital Y small W small Y this is capital W small Y capital W capital Y and so on So now that we have found out the genotypes of all these 16 boxes, what do we see? Now looking at what do you have here, you can decide what would be the phenotype. So we have actually colored the phenotypes in white, green and yellow respectively. So what is the F2 phenotypic ratio? So how many white fruits do we get? So the possibility of getting white fruit is maximum. So 12 out of 16 is white. So in out of the in 12 of these boxes, we have a capital W that is a dominant allele of white. So therefore, 12 out of 16 will be white. What about yellow? Yellow would be 3 out of 16 and green would be 1 out of 16. So if you look at the F2 phenotypic ratio, that is the phenotypic ratio in the F2 generation. So that ratio comes out to be 12 is to 3 is to 1. So in dominant epistasis, F2 phenotypic ratio is 12 is to 3 is to 1. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.